Hey, welcome back. Today we have a prototyping project for my friends at Spark2Go. And what this is about is we are modifying the thread on a off-the-shelf drinking bottle to have a more sound mechanical thread. The regular thread on these is a round profile formed thread right in the sheet metal and we're modifying them to have a, a very very heavy duty trapezoidal thread. And the way we're doing this we're machining an adapter and we're silver soldering it onto the bottles. And this is the process of, of going about how to do this. What we have here is a stainless steel drink bottle. Very thin walled stainless, about 0.5 millimeter wall thickness. And the customer asked me for a prototype run before they have the proper bottles made. This is an off the shelf one uh, to modify the thread up here because this thread does not allow for any proper mechanical connection. There's a roll formed round profile thread with about <laughs> one and an eighth of engagement. What he wants. He wants me to mission an adapter out of a chunk of stainless that fits over here and has a 70 by 3 millimeter, 3 millimeters pitch trapezoidal thread. Um, he has some caps that he had machined out of, out of aluminium. I cut one in half so you can see what's going on. And here, in here you can see the trapezoidal thread. Uh, the, this is how the caps look when not sawn apart. And we need to machine a adapter that fits, that matches this cap. He has made a drawing, of course, cat design, uh, tolerance drawing. And now my task is to make this, this adapter out of this chunk of stainless and either weld or braze it onto this bottle. I already made one prototype that I tick welded. It didn't leak, but it, the, the weld was not too, too nice. Um, it's, it's really, it's really thin walled material. In an ideal case, we would laser weld it in a rotary position. Let's see how we machine a fairly thin walled adapter out of, out of this uh, chunk of stainless. Just for reference, the material we are running here is a Stahl rostfrei, means stainless steel, and we're using 14301 which is also called V2R in Germany, which in the ANSI world is a 304 stainless. Fairly soft material, 160 to 220, 210 hardness Brunel and a tensile strength RM of 500 to 700 newtons per millimeter square. It's a rather gummy material, fairly soft, tense. Uh, some people say it work hardens. I say uh, your tools get dull. Since we have to remove a ton of material out of these chunks of material, we can take a shortcut. And that shortcut is called a Kernbohrer, which is an annular cutter. These guys. These will remove a chunk of material out of the center, leave a slug and a fairly big hole without turning all the material into chips. So that's what we're going to use. This is the Morse Taper 3 adapter. And since I'm a lazy person, these go into a tool holder in the, in the, the quick change tool post. These annual cutters usually have a, a 19 or 19.05 millimeter shank and have two weld on flats. And I made an adapter out of them more zipper tube blank that holds these. This is just a regular multi-fix boring bar holder with a 30 millimeter more zipper tube sleeve. The screw in back is to eject the tool, but this sleeve also has a slit for a for a wedge to eject the tooling in cases the screw is too short. So I got the slug of material here in the sixth jaw chuck on the reverse jaws. And I indicated it in as good as possible using the, the adjust through of the chuck and also a rawhide mallet on the extreme end here of the part to get the tilt right because the saw cut is far from square. 
I will show you that on the next piece. And I'm happy that I got it within 0.1 millimeter or um, four thousandths of an inch. As you can see, it's a little bit more out here, but that's fine. That will machine away. <laughs> but I don't want the part to ha be all to the wonkers on us because the final OD will be very close to the OD of the stock. So I have to be careful. The insert we are using is a CNMG insert, which is considered a ne negative geometry, means the insert ha is not parallel to, to the outside of the shank. It's tilted to the front because it has zero degree clearance in front here. This gives me on a CNMG insert with this style of holder four usable cutting edges compared to a positive geometry insert like a CCMT which only has two makes this insert more economical for some uses while it's negative insert it still has a positive cutting geometry uh, because it has a very large cutting rake in front here the zero degree also make it a very tough insert because it's a 90 degree angle here is very robust That's a 40 millimeter rotor brooch or annular cutter or slugger or whatever you want to call them or as we call them Kernbohrer. We put the, the lathe in a low speed like 200 rpm and see how it behaves. Okay, I did not drill through all the way because otherwise I would hit my my chuck jaws. I drilled in 20 millimeters. Now we're going to flip it around and face the other side, also face it to thickness and remove the core. Also breaking the, the edges here before I take it out because this is sharp. Just so I don't cut myself when I handle this piece of stock. So this comes out of ah hot. Ha he ho. <laughs> it's hot. Okay, the part has cooled down enough so I can handle it without burning myself. Put it in the sixth jaw. Seat it against the back side of the jaws and clamp it. Okay. We'll take first we will take a facing cut again, check the thickness, and then cut it to final thickness right away. Since we took a facing cut now and both ends of the parts are half decent cleaned up, I can check the thickness now. So 20, 26.17, 26.15, so it's, it's, it's almost parallel, which is a good sign. So it goes back, oh, it goes back in the chuck. And now we can face it to final thickness. Now 
There we go, remove the slug. <laughs> Get pushed back into the spindle, so push that out from the back. There we go, that's a nice large bore. And we end up with a nice chunk of stainless steel that we can still keep. Uh, keep in mind those slugs from the anvil cutters have a razor sharp edge or uh, a lip where the cutter breaks through the material. Remove that before you store those away. And also engrave the material, what it is, into the slug. Otherwise it's worthless. If you don't know what material it is, you can't use it for anything um, besides personal projects. And even then I would weary of using some random chunks of material. Especially if you need to weld or harden the part. Don't put a ton of effort in a part out of a material that you don't know. Okay, you saw me boring out the majority of the material with this CNMG negative rake uh, boring bar. This is a 20mm boring bar, fairly rigid with its short projection length. That allowed me to take a 3mm in diameter cut on this stainless steel at a decent feed and, and speed. I was running at f about 500 rpm and a feed of 60 microns per per revolution. So pretty decent material removal. And as you can see by the chips, uh, that, that's a pretty sizable chip. Then I used this, this ISCAR combination boring tool, drill and turning tool to, to finish the ID on this side of the part. The OD is not finished yet because I will grab the part from the ID and finish the outside. Also, the other side will get bored larger, but I will do that also gripping from the inside. The reason I'm doing it that way is because these outside jaws are, for, for outside work, always in the way because they are overhanging a lot. So I cannot do really any useful, except if I had some tools that can reach in here, which is very dangerous. So that's the reason for this. And I didn't bore all the way through. I left 0.4 millimeter of stock on the backside because I didn't want to bore into my jaws. So let's put a small chamfer on the on the spore. That was a lot of boring, a lot of material removal. And I would have preferred to use a piece of stainless steel pipe that thickness or thick walled uh, tubing or as it's called here, Drehteilrohr or Hohlstahl. I would have used that, but I, think I couldn't source it in this material in a decent lead time, so um, that's why we're going from solid stock. I switch the jaws around and I can grab this part very securely from the inside. Clamp it a little bit. Make sure it's seated against the, the face of the jaws and tighten it to a solid gronk. Now we can remove this, this very thin section of material here. I cut the board the back side of the part, still in the orientation that you saw before, with the large CNMG boring bar. Cut board it and also machined a small step down here. And this allows now the, the bottle to be a snug fit in our part. I machined a small step in here in addition to the large counter bore, and this allows 
the bore to, to, to clear the radius from forming the threads on this bottle. There is a severe, like a draft angle, and this needs to be cleared, so that's why there is a step. And this fits very nicely, and we have a very small gap here that's either useful for welding, or if we decide to braze it, uh, that's also per perfect for brazing. So that's looking pretty, pretty good. I prepared all 10 of the parts completely from the ID. Did all the ID work, all to dimension, all, all of them fit the, fit the bottles. Leave a very neat, narrow gap in here. That's ideal for either tick welding or brazing. And now we have to decide how we go how we are going to machine the outside. In an ideal case, I would just take the, the hard jaws and grab the part like this. The problem is, I have this, this three millimeter pitch thread back here, and I'm worried of running into the hard jaws with the threading tool because uh, the step is so wide. So I have at least two options now. One, I could make an arbor, and I can slip the part over that has a step on the back side and have an, enough clearance to, to the chuck uh, to give me clearance. That would be a good, good solution. Could even use tailstock support. Or I could bore soft jaws, make a set of soft jaws that grab the part from the inside and have enough clearance to the back which these jaws don't have, so I don't run the threading tool into it. And I think that's what I'm going to try. So I found a set of soft jaws that I was able to re recut for this purpose. I had this chuck a chunk of material in the center to preload the jaws. And then I just cut the OD and now we have these razor sharp edges. And whatever you do, never, never do not deburr soft jaws. I like a die grinder for this purpose because I can do it right in the machine. If you don't deburr them, they act like a rotary knife when spitting, and if you touch them, they will lay you open. And we don't need a Diodaro situation here on the machine. After deburring, the part fits nicely on these jaws. We have a flat back register where the part can sit up against. Uh, the problem with these jaws is you cannot over tighten them because the material here is, is not crazy thick. You have to use some, some proper judgment when tightening down the chuck when using uh, narrow soft jaws, aluminum jaws especially like this. But as we were taking a very heavy cut when we cut the trapezoidal thread, I decided to support the part with the tailstock. I made a uh, plug. I think this is a piece of PVC that fits very tightly in here. And we will recut the center here. I think the friction here should be enough to, to allow me to cut the center. And then we will support it with a live center in the tailstock and have a very, very solid situation here. That's the situation now with the plug and the life center in place and I, this, this is very convincing setup, very solid, 
we are nice and centered due to the three shot chuck and the plug and the tailstock give a lot of rigidity in the setup. And when we take our threading tool out here, we still have plenty of room towards the jaws. So that's good too. So the setup allows us now to do all the OD work in a very safe way. We do all the turning with the CNMG insert that I used earlier. As I said, this is a very economical and very nicely cutting tool. The insert I'm using is a finishing insert for stainless, which works excellent on this machine, not only in stainless, but also in regular steel. And it's reasonably cheap. I think one insert is like four euros or something like that if you get a pack of 10. Now we have to do what's basically a thread relief on the end of, of the part. It's not really a thread relief, but uh, we need some clearance for either welding or brazing before we run into the thread. So we're using a two millimeter wide parting tool and we remove a little bit of material uh, to a diameter smaller than the minor diameter of the thread. I will just plunge in a few times and then do a traverse cut to clean it up. Okay, now we take our threading tool and we put a little bit of a chamfer on both sides of, of this thick section that will form the thread later. The funny thing about stainless um, when you have a, a form tool and you have a lot of engagement width, it tends to gall up. Um, then you have either to use coolant or when running at a low surface speed, like currently, uh, cutting oil. Uh, cutting oil uh, works better at pre preventing um, fretting and seizing of the tool, but uh, coolant in this case was closer. So don't overthink that. And on the back side, we do the same, just checking for clearance. And now it's finally time to cut the actual thread. I'm running at fairly low speed, between 50 and 100 RPM. I can, I can vary between those speeds using the VFD on the lathe. In fact, I can go down to like one RPM. That's the lowest this lathe will spin and it still has a tremendous amount of torque that slow. <laughs> In fact, I could cut this thread this slow, but we're not going to do that. Um, this is a three millimeter pitched thread. I already set the gears and the change gear box to the pitch. The lead screw on this lathe is three millimeter. That means I could open and close the half nuts in any position and, and always come back into my, into my uh, thread that I'm cutting, not losing orientation. But that's a very uncommon practice, uh, at least in my part of the world. Usually for threading, we leave the half nuts engaged until we're done with the thread. We have the tool run through the section that needs to be threaded, stop the lathe, disengage the or, or unwind the tool from, from the work, reverse the lathe, have it move back and repeat that until the thread is done, uh, compared to opening the half nuts and doing it that way. Just different style of threading. And my muscle memory is, is set up for doing it the, the European way with the half nuts closed. And that's what I'm, going, what I'm going to do here. Also, I get often asked, uh, without having a compound slide on the lathe, how do I thread? And the answer is simple, I do straight in feet. 
It's that simple. You don't need, on, the, on these small threads that we're cutting and in reasonable easy to machine materials like stainless or tool steels, uh, you can just straight in feed. You don't need to feed the tool along the flank of the thread. That's, uh, that's interesting on very large threads or very, very deep contour, uh, like a round threaded, a round profile thread. Then, then things get a little bit more interesting. But uh, the small of a trapezoidal thread, no need to feed it across the flank. So uh, let's go. Let's, let, let's just start threading. I will just feed in 0.1 millimeter, add some cutting oil, and do a first pass. Now I unwind the tool and reverse the lathe. So, yep, that's a 3 millimeter pitch. And then I'm just uh, feeding in 0.2 millimeters in diameter per pass until I reach my, my depth. And by the amount of smoke we're creating, you can, you can see that this is a fairly heavy form cut. We have a lot of engagement of the cutting edge because we're cutting uh, the flanks and the flat bottom. It's not like a 60 degree V-root thread that's only the, the flanks. We also have to cut the, the flat ground of the thread. Okay, we should be very close to our final thread um, dimensions. Before I proceed on, I'll take a file and deburr it and do a test fit on my on the mating part. Okay, let's get the Delrin plug out there that I used to tailstock support our workpiece. Just threading in a, a draw, uh, a slide hammer, and get the part and get the plug out. There we go. Take the test piece or the the mating part.
do a thread test and that's perfectly fine. It, we have a little bit of side and side play. Uh, since this is a since this is going to be a consumer product, I don't want to make the thread too tight and too crazy mad tight fitting. And since this is a consumer product, I don't want a mad tight fit on this thread. This needs to be uh, user friendly. <laughs> this is not an adjustment thread for a telescope. So I will leave it like that. I will get the, the Delrim plug in back in and machine this front section down to final wall thickness, which is one millimeter. I'm doing this now after threading because I'm worried that the one millimeter wall thickness might be a little bit too wimpy to support all this heavy work back here. Just a safety precaution. Now we have a two millimeter radius tool and we're going to form a radius on this edge here according to the drawing. Running fairly slow as this is a form tool between 50 and 100 rpm again and we're just working our way in until we get a nice blend with the radius. No super critical dimensions here. That's looking pretty neat. I will leave it like that. The difference between the expert and the beginner is the expert knows when to stop. I'm using a triangular carbide scraper with a nice dragging cut means I I have it like this and at a very shallow cutting angle and I just roll it over the edge to create a nice radius in here and I will do the same on the outside. When we look at the trapezoidal thread there is the thread and it, it tapers out to a complete zero and to a wafer thin piece of material out here that, that's all ragged and ugly and bloody dangerous of course. So the industry has something that's called a blunt start thread. That means you remove a lot of material from the first thread like up to here where you have significant material already and then it gen tangentially leads out to the major diameter of the thread. I can't do that on a manual lathe. I would have to set it up on a mill with a rotary table, but we can do something else here. Uh, we can do, well, th this would be what's called a Higby thread, invented for fire hose couplers, but uh, also very well known in the Insta Machinist community to make fancy pens. I can't do a Higby thread on a manual lathe, but I can do a blunt start thread by using a milling spindle in the tool post and using the spindle of the lathe as a rotary table. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to use this uh, Cress router motor in a custom built mount in the tool post. I did a video on this because I initially used it for thread milling and also this is the same router motor that I used to cut down the, <laughs> the original clamping ring on my lathe and now I'm using it to create plant start threads. get this end mill a little bit farther out. A 
otherwise the, the collet nut will collide with the work. And that would be, at this point in time, at this uh, level of complexity on the part, rather annoying. Okay, I cannot get you a much better angle because I need to see, see what's going on. Basically, what we're going to do is we will cut down the first thread uh, down to its minor diameter, about to an area where the thread is already has has some some width up here. Just double checking my okay, that's my diameter that I'm going to cut to. And of course, since I have a pitch of 3mm, I have to move. I'm not using the lead screw in this case. I'm just spinning the, the chuck by hand. And also, I'm moving the carriage in uh, this direction. So I do not cut into the other thread here. It's, it sounds com more complicated than it is. Okay, that was the first pass. Okay, that was the first pass. Uh, let's line it up again. I will plunge in and then, uh, first plunge in in C direction, and then in X direction. Okay, here we can see the thread start now. That's a nice defined thread start. Not this paper thin piece of material that's leading out to zero. Uh, way nicer. Not, not a Higby thread, but uh, what I would call a blunt start. And we almost blend it into the surface. The remaining little bit will be blended by hand. I will not, will not bother doing any more with the milling spindle. But this works quite well. It's not ideal, <laughs> but uh, it's better than nothing. Better than hand filing a Higby thread, which was described in the Machinist's Bedside Reader Part 1. This side is done. I, I ran a very fine sanding sponge around it and some Kratex to knock off any hair, hair burrs. And now it's safe to touch. So now we can take the part out. And be almost done with it. Except for the back side, there is one little thing that we need to do. Uh, we have our blunt start thread in front here. But in the back, the thread is still leading out to, to this stupid thin piece of material. So we flip it around. We use the same soft jaws to hold it from the inside, which is not ideal because the ID is not the same. But good enough for this operation. And then we will do the same blunt start thread here on the back side. Now you can see, now you will get a pretty decent overhead view of what's going on.
And that's all it takes to cut the blunt start end and, and stop on the thread. So let's get the spindle out of the way. <laughs> spindle, it's still a router motor. One day I will break down and buy a proper high-speed spindle for, for the lathe, like one of those 800 watt uh, spindles we put on our CNC routers. Some needle file work to remove the burrs that the end mill creates. And also put a little bit of a lead out radius on the top of the blunt start. and a file to knock over the, the rear burr or the sharp edge. It's not really a burr. There we go. That's the final part. Comes out the leaf. Done. One beautiful part. Here we go. That's the first one of these threaded adapters done with the blunt start thread and also a blunt end because we don't like those razor sharp thread ends. And the, the master cap, the, a very nice thread on fit. And also it's a very nice fit onto the bottle. So this is one of the bottles after silver soldering the, the adapter on gas bead blasting and some hand polishing of the of the solder joints i will also show some pictures of the solder seams close up and as you can see if done right it looks pretty good my friends at from spark to go not only sent me the aluminium cap that you saw me test fit but they also sent me a very current prototype of their design to do a proper test fit and uh, they allowed me to show this so uh, this this screws on very nicely what what this is is it's a portable carbonizer for uh, for a drink so you have your tap water and you want sparkly water you have a co you have a co2 caps capsule in here and you have some engineering in there uh, some internals in here and you press this button and it will um, carbonize your drink they are running currently a kickstarter to bring it to market so if that's of interest for you i will put a link down in the description i don't have any real affiliation with them apart from being their prototype shop <laughs> So uh, that's that. This seems to work. Another project out the door. Thank you all for watching and I'll be back. <laughs>